All right. Welcome, welcome, folks. It's Thursday night. It's Dave's healthy, happy hour. Good to see you back again. Um, tonight, very excited. We have some some huge guests, um, Kimberly and Stephen from one of my favorite restaurants, Grateful Kitchen. I'm going to bring them on in just a minute. Uh, a couple of quick announcements first. Um, say hello in the chat. Uh, if you're here on Facebook, if you're here on YouTube, tell us where you're uh, calling in from so we can uh, say hello to you. Um, we'll have time for some questions at the end. If you have questions for Kimberly and Stephen about eating healthy, about uh, you know, cooking, the restaurant business, uh, whatever, whatever you like to talk about. So we'll chat with them. Um, but I am David Robinson, the author of My Unremarkable Brain, available in stores now, Amazon, Burns & Noble, Indie, Indie Bound, anywhere that books are sold. So please, um, please do. Uh-oh, we just lost Kimberly and Steven, so I'm going to vamp for just one more minute. Um, please do uh, check out my book when you get a chance. Uh, next week, we're back to Friday night, just to let you know. Um, we're going to be um, talking once again to Dr. Stephen Schrantz, and um, he, the immunologist from University of Chicago. He's going to talk more about uh, the immune system, COVID, all kinds of things. Um, our first repeat guest, we had so much of a great response last time, we're bringing him back. But tonight, we're going to talk to Kimberly and Stephen. Very excited to bring these guys on. Without further ado, here they are, Kimberly and Stephen. Welcome, hey, welcome. Good, to good to see you guys. Yeah. Excited. How are you guys, how you guys doing tonight? We're pretty good. Pretty yeah. good, man. Can't, uh, this is a first for us, so we're, we're excited. Yeah, yeah, excited to have you on here. Um, so, like I said, you guys are uh, one of the things I love. It, this series uh, grew out of the launch of my book. Uh, my book tells my story about uh, how I sort of discovered healthy eating, specifically low carb eating, but really, in general, the the connection between food and health, um, and much more specifically, brain health, and um, how I started off a weight loss diet and ended up finding you know, that diet um, affects uh, epilepsy. And so it's sort of about my journey, but also interviews um, people in this space, in this field, um, researchers, scientists, other patients, um, all kinds of, of stories. And, um, you know, one of the things that's, that's kind of emerged um, in this little series we're doing it's a it's a book launch in some ways but it's also just a really it's a cool chance for me to get to, uh, to talk to some folks like you uh in the world of health and uh food and things that i'm interested in and passionate about and uh just for me to learn more so um i'll start us off just by telling how i discover grateful kitchen um and this is um so uh, as i as i tell in my book um I, I'm a rower, you know, master's uh, rower, um, you know, one of the one of the federal guys that goes down to the boathouse down there in Alexandria, right there at the end of, um, of uh, I guess it's Madison Street, right? Mm -hmm. right. So 5 a.m. every morning, I would be driving right by your restaurant and say, oh, this, you know, hey, you know, at first it was, an, it was an empty space or maybe there was a tire place or something there. And then, you know, you guys moved in and I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, there's this cool little restaurant there. I got to go there sometime, you know, pass by the next day. I got to go there sometime, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> never, never quite made it in. And, and, and then, um, you know, sort of concurrent with this, I was finding this low carb lifestyle. And then uh, I thought, well, juice, smoothies, you know, that's, that's all high carb stuff. Why would I go there? Um, and so it wasn't until my wife, Judy, who does not do low carb, um, said, Oh, I want to want to try that juice place, you know, let's go check it out. So we went down there. And um, we were hooked from the first the first visit. I mean, actually, as I'm going through the menu and I saw the, the item called hold the bread, I thought, okay, this is, this place has stuff for me. This is, this is my kind of place right here. Um, He's got all the ideas. That was my, like con one of my contributions to wow, the- Wow, thank yeah. you. Thank you for thinking of us low carb folks, you know, and it's delicious. It's what's in it. It's kale, egg, salmon. Yeah. Yep. And you get to, uh, you get to choose two between, um, 
our sauerkraut we make, hot sauce, and uh, walnut pesto. Yes, yeah. and I've tried each each and every combo, and and you really can't go wrong. Um, Thank you. Thank really, you. really delicious. And so um, we that that was we, like I said, we were hooked. I think we went every week then for like two months. Um, <laughs> we just it became sort of our Sunday. We come on Sundays, right? Our yeah, yeah. Um, Saturday or Sunday, you know, but once a weekend for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, yes, so, counter, yeah, that was, mm -hmm. that was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, so yeah, th uh, thank you for, uh, th for the work you do and, uh, can't wait to get back in and, and sitting, uh, you know, sit at that bar again after COVID's over, but, um, Take us back to the beginning. How did you guys come up with the idea and how did this all get started? How far back do we go? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I actually had a juice company called Grateful Juice and mm -hmm. I started that sometimes the years run together. I believe it was around 2016. Okay. Um, and the purpose of the juice company was really born out of i have my my yoga teacher sorry our dog is trying to poke yeah, her head literally like, like <laughs> no that's okay mine are chewing on something right now so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so my my yoga teacher basically said hey kimberly you know she's from san francisco and she came to visit to do a workshop and um i also have a yoga business a yoga school and she came to do a workshop and afterwards she goes opened my fridge and I had like Gatorade and buy five and some other things. She goes, you can't serve this to your, your yoga students. You, you, you have to stop like right now and <laughs> you need to start a juice company. And I was like, what? So um, anyways, I, I listened to her. I started the juice company for my yoga students so that when they were done with hot yoga, they came out of hot yoga and they drank a freezing cold green juice with structured water and they felt amazing. Um, and that's sort of how Grateful started. Okay. Uh, the name comes from my love of the Grateful Dead. Ah, that was, um, gonna, that was gonna be my next question. <laughs> yeah, um, but I when I thought of it, I really actually remember when I thought of what to call the juice company, I remember where I was and everything. Um, and I just thought to myself, well, it's really like twofold, right? Because it's grateful for the Grateful Dead, but really it's just, hey, like be, be grateful for your life every single day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's how the idea was born. And then um, strangely, my Sweet Sport had a fitness gym that was actually up the road towards um, north towards uh, Washington DC, right on the left-hand side and where that location was, they were tearing that building down. And so we had to find somewhere to go. And basically we found the space that we're at. And then there was this little section that we didn't know what to do with. And I said, well, why don't we just, we can put grateful here. And that's how we ended up there. And um, when I met Steven, that's when the food element came in. Okay. Um, because I am not a chef. I am a yoga teacher. Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I know how to make juice too. Yeah. Um, but really when I met him. Well, we met before we had to uh, make the move. Yeah, yeah, we met From sort of, gym. yeah, we met, um, I had signed the lease, but I didn't, at that point I thought it was just gonna be Grateful Juice. Um, mm -hmm. And then we met and this is how the universe works. And my, he was my yoga student. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And, um, we started talking and became friends and um, started dating. And I said, hey, I'm opening up this juice place. And he's like, oh, I love, you know, I'm all about like organic food and, you know, um, you know, that there's nutrition and like basically what you're putting into your body and element has really sort of taken off. So that's kind of how it happened. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. That's super cool. It's just how that sort of, serendipity like always plays a role right you kind of just things kind of fall together right absolutely yeah yeah i mean we never thought the food element was gonna i mean we we still sell you know juice cleanses and smoothies and everything but the food part has just really been something that we really did not expect in terms of 
you know, just how popular it became. Um, well, you've been in there yeah. and it's super small. We don't have an oven. We don't have a stove. Yeah. We use like, you know, a combination of two or, or four uh, induction burners. So we didn't really, you know, I mean, we knew we, we can do with that, but there's only so much you can do in terms of volume and, and, you know, cooking techniques, I guess. But yeah, yeah. yeah. right when uh, COVID started, we've always wanted to do like dinners. We always wanted to do, you know, before COVID started, we always wanted to have people inside and maybe sell tickets for like a party of eight or something like that and, and have some, uh, just some education attached along with it. We should probably tell the like people who are listening how small it actually is. Yeah. So it's like 700, <laughs> I think, or no, 600 square it's feet. It's 625 square feet. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, if you brought like chairs from the gym, you could maybe seat like eight, nine people. Right. Um, you have no counter space for anyone waiting. Right. So it's, it's some, it's, to give folks an idea, something between a food truck and a studio apartment. I would yeah. Say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. With, with like some decently high ceilings. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, so like that was, you know, I think because when when COVID came, we were in spring and then summer and you know smoothies and juice. That temperature wise, it was still kind of relevant. Mm -hmm. But once um, things kind of slow down in, in the fall, people really just wanted food, and I think you know the um, the expendable or the like extra income they had wasn't really going towards breakfast or lunch. So um, we started just doing dinners. I think we started in April, but just doing to go dinners for one, two or four people. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of helped us survive until now. And now we're, we're looking for a larger space where we can, you know, maybe have an oven and, <laughs> and uh, maybe a grill, I don't know, something crazy, but. Uh, <laughs> Dare to dream, right? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to think too big, but. Maybe have like three tables. I don't know, let's yeah. get crazy. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's been pretty, pretty amazing. And I think the, the community that we've developed just with, I mean, with yoga has been a super strong community that's kind of, you know, transitioned over along with the gym, but, um, and you being part of that, just people who think the same and like have the same idea, maybe they come once a month or once every two months, but still, you know, they're, they give something to it. And that's been the most rewarding thing, even though when uh, you know, things are super slow. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I really appreciate um, about the place and about you guys is that you are hooked into that sort of, um, I guess, enmeshed in this this sort of community that you've created, um, which is um, I keep put I keep covering the microphone, which is really cool. Um, I like that that because because you can kind of feel it throughout the the experience. I mean, everything from your emails that come out every week. Um, which I always appreciate and salivate over the pictures um, to, uh, you know, just to the experience of visiting. Um, what, talk, Kimberly, can you talk a little bit more about the, uh, about the yoga and the fitness side of it? Cause it's really, I mean, like you say, it's the two businesses of one, well, you have actually have two, um, two workout places, right? What are we yeah, so I have three, technically three different businesses. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and and it actually started with the yoga, you said. Actually, see, this is that why I asked how far back we should go. It actually started my business part. We we my business partner and I in Sweet Sport, which is the yoga and the gym. We've been partners for, gosh, twelve years now. Wow. Um, I left corporate. Uh, corporate America, I was um, in investment banking. Hmm. And I went, it's, that this is kind of a story in and of itself, is that I had, <clears throat> I had traveled to Europe and on the way back on the airplane, I started to get this pain down my leg and I didn't, I thought it was my leg. Um, hmm. I didn't really know anything about the spine at that point. And um, anyways, when I got home, it continued. I remember sitting at my desk at work, like rubbing the side of my leg I didn't realize it was my sciatic nerve. So it was really coming from my back. Uh, and okay. um, I spoke to my mother about it. And she was at that point, I'd seen a chiropractor and she's like, well, why don't you try yoga? And I said, mom, that is not a workout. I am not. <laughs> um, but at a certain point I kind of got desperate. And um, so I just Googled one day. at that point I was living in Delray, Alexandria. I Googled yoga, Alexandria. And the first place mm -hmm. that came up, um, was a hot yoga place. Okay. Um, and it was on Eisenhower Avenue and I went, well, at least I'll sweat. Fine. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. 
and I, I arrived, there was a line getting to the front desk and there was this tiny man behind the front desk, like basically checking people in, in a speedo. And I was like, where am I? What is happening? What have I got myself what into? What is going on? I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna try to blend in and like get this over with. Um, anyways, I took that class and I remember still, which that was 2009, I came out of that class and I went, well, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And six months later, yeah. I quit my corporate job. I became his um, karma yogi and I was cleaning the studio and doing whatever he wanted me to do. And just basically like living at the studio all day and taking as much yoga as I possibly could. Hmm. Because I walked out of that room after being in pain for probably three months and I was completely out of pain after one class. And wow. so that wow. experience like shaped it, but I knew inherently that if I didn't keep doing it, that the pain mm -hmm. would come back. So I thought, okay, well, I have to keep doing this. And then it changed my whole life. And um, anyways, my best friend and I, she got, she ended up getting really into it. And then we're like, well, let's, let's start our own business and make clothing. We're going to make yoke clothing. Okay. So we did that. That was original sweet sport. And then okay. that morphed into the yoga studio. And of course I, ha I had been teaching this whole time, um, or sorry, I had been practicing this whole time. I decided to get certified, so then I was teaching. And then I was like, okay, well I'll open up a studio. It was very small, it only had 12 mats. And then that morphed and morphed and morphed. And then we had the fitness, the, the um, fitness morphed out of the yoga. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's sort of like how the whole thing happened. Um, but yeah. it started really with, uh, with with that story and clothing. So we designed clothing first. Cool. Um, yeah, but the whole thing for me was just like, okay, my job is to get people out of pain. Yeah. You know, like I got out of pain and now I want other people to get out of pain, like mentally, physically. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the combination of getting out of pain is for me personally is the yoga and then what you put into your body. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where the food element comes in. Yeah. Um, because. Well, your juice too. Like, yeah, your yeah, yeah. Like people, I put that in the same category. People never are misconstrued juice with like, just like sugar and like, you know, it's just like oh, yeah, no. apples or pineapples or anything like that. Right. The cool thing about her is because I was the same way when I first met her, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. when I came to the studio, I saw the juice and I was like, oh, like I was kind of like into the keto thing then. Mm -hmm. and sugar like I, I don't need this like this makes no sense but then i like, read the ingredients and it's just like you know apple is the last thing on the ingredient list and it tastes like kale celery cucumbers lemon or whatever it may be she did some with uh some some beets and some other things but it was all like sugar's the last thing in there yeah, yeah. or none at all and or, it was or just none green. at all and it was just like all cucumber celery spinach lemon which is the one that we do now um and so doing that like that was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, there's a whole nother world to this that is extremely beneficial um, yeah. and kind of got me hooked because I, I was definitely not the uh, not the biggest juice fan when when we met, but quickly, quickly turned over. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, well, let's pursue that just a little bit more, if you would. I mean, what's the um, the advantage of, of juicing vegetables, drinking juice vegetables versus eating the vegetables, you know, sort of thing. Um, do you, do they lose anything along the way or, is, or gain anything? I mean, kind of um, talk us through a bit of that. Well, so it, it all just comes down to hydration and it's something that I've come into just be pretty passionate about and, you know, understand about like what kind of water really fits our, uh, our body cells the best. Hmm. And, so when she, she mentioned earlier something called structured water, which yeah. is like if you have if you're in the ocean or if you're in a running stream or, um, you know, like if you have coconut water, it's thicker. Right. So it's not like just like kind of tap water thin, like you can just run your hand through it and no problem. Um, but the structure comes from minerals and salts. Hmm. So the the water in cucumbers and celery and kale and all those things have those minerals. So yeah. drinking that structured water, the minerals carry that through your digestive tract and actually helps to alkalize your body. When okay. 
in all reality, if you just drink, um, just drink plain water without any minerals or tap water, or, you know, um, I don't want to throw any filters under the bus, but like just like any, you know, home filter, yeah. that has no structure, have no minerals, hmm. then there's really not the potential, you know, or the benefit is not um, reaching the full potential. Yeah. So with the green juice, that's, you know, it's something Cucumber. easy to digest yeah. yeah, and packed with celery. has got lots of good salt, lots of good sodium, potassium, uh, good balance there. So that is actually going to be hydrating your cells and, uh, you know, preventing your blood cells from, from coming together and keeping them, keeping their structure strong. So that's the benefit that I, I found. Um, and that's the term I like to, you know, call like alkalizing, um, you know, alkalinity and alkalizing are some, are, can get thrown around like keto, you know, you put like alkaline water on something and everyone buys it. Right. Um, but it really just comes from minerals and okay. that's, it assimilates with your body and it allows it to go through your digestive tract without, uh, you know, while maintaining its integrity. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's cool. I mean, and, and because, you know, sodium, potassium, these are, um, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Electrolytes as well, right? right? Everyone exactly. hears electrolytes and they think Gatorade, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. But no. But no. no. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's definitely like benefits to like smoothies too. So like eating all these vegetables have obviously have the fiber, um, but you can also eat your hydration. That's also another thing. There's plenty of, you know, uh, civilizations that have survived for thousands of years in deserts by eating their hydration mm. in different forms, eating their food, and that provides hydration. And actually, uh, you know, one of the things that I found is that a uh, ghee, like organic ghee, yeah. has the same structure and and has uh, extremely hydrating potentials. Um, right. Yeah. So, but you know, there's, there's benefits to eating it whole, like the skin and the cucumber, or smoothies are great too. Um, mm. But the, the juice is good just to, you know, if you're looking for a little less uh, digestive action. Right, right. Okay, cool, cool. But, you know, it, it's interesting. And there's there's so much to learn. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, no like, doubt. You know, no you doubt. write a book, but, like, there's still, like. Well, and, I know. And that's really, my book is about, I, I often call it a, a journey of learning, you know, as I'm right. just talking to different people and learning different things and putting it all together. But uh, it's really just the beginning. Um, yeah you know, for me, um, the very, the very basics. Uh, and I have to put it that way because I'm no guru. I'm no doctor. I'm no expert. You know, one of the first things I say is how not to read this book. You know, <laughs> none of this is medical advice, you know, don't, don't take this, but you know, you do have to do your own, your own exploration, your own, right. you know, uh, experimentation in, in some ways. It's sort of, um, you know, the, the N equals one experiment of, um, let me try this and see how I feel. Okay. No, but, but I think that, you know, that inspires other people that, you know, most, they probably think, oh, doctors only write books or, you know, whatever. But if you read your book and they're like, oh, wow, like I can do this or yeah, I can, I, I can, you know, take this step into health or into pursuing something like that. So I think that's, uh, you know, definitely going to help a lot of people kind of, uh, maybe, give them that little push they need. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it's definitely been fun. It's definitely been fun. Um, so, so Steven, so we talked about a little bit about, um, Kimberly, how you got the idea to do this juice, juice bar and then expanded and you pulled Steven into the project. Now, before that you were in the, in the restaurant business, right? Steven. Oh, I was like, I, was um, yes. Um, <laughs> Not for very long. <laughs> I actually, I've only had one paying job before Grateful Kitchen. Is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been interested in food and I've always cooked with my mom, you know, from a young age. And I mentioned earlier that uh, I played tennis growing up and always mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, find the new, the new diet or what, you know, try to be more competitive with eating too. Um, yeah. So he's downplaying himself right now. This is what he does. So that's why I'm here to tell you the real story. So, yes, please. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, I was horn for him if he won't toot him himself. <laughs> I'll do the dirty work over here when he's done being. But yeah, so that um, it just came from that. And then all through college, I cooked for myself and mm -hmm. uh, I, I coached uh, tennis after college and was doing that for a while. But it was funny. I was I was coaching at UNC Greensboro, and one of my friend's moms, 
who was on my tennis team at Charleston, um, was like, you know, I, I was living with her and she was the, um, the athletic director. Mm-hmm. And so at the t- end of my, my contract or end of the, the year, she was like, Stephen, we'll offer you a job, but like, I think you should go home and, and cook <laughs> because <laughs> I would like me you know, make food for her. And like, I was always, always reading cookbooks and you know, that was what I spent all of my extra time doing. So I moved home and, uh, we went to my mom and I went to a restaurant to eat called the restaurant at Patamac farm up in Lovettsville. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an organic farm, like farm to table. It's considered fine dining. Um, but just like a really beautiful, beautiful vu- view and they forage for a lot of other things. And, you know, um, kind of what I'm into and, cool. and I decided just working there for free. Like you can stage and came in a few days a week and then I kept doing that, kept doing tennis, uh, working. I did some work with ESPN, um, for like tennis highlights and statistics and that kind of stuff that kind of in between. Cool. But then ended up getting a, a job and a year, I guess a year and a half later, we opened Grateful Kitchen. So, um, I left where I was working in DC and came to run my own ship. <laughs> it was, it's been a lot of learning. <laughs> that is yeah. Awesome. He's leaving a lot out that he was an amazing, ten- is an amazing tennis player still. He played division one tennis in college, which is an achievement and was, yeah. was an amazing athlete. And I think that like all being at playing at that level, I think he won't, he, of course he will never brag about himself, but I'm allowed to brag about him, but absolutely. Uh, but I, but honestly, like being an athlete and competing at that level, like he did for so long, because I mean, they were grooming him to be like, you know, he was one of those kids that they pulled out of school to like go play their sport, you oh, know, wow. that guy. Yeah. So, but that came with like a lot like of, school. a lot of injuries, you know, and he yeah. was probably dealing with injuries from the time you were like, what, like 13. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I yeah. think that, it gives you some insight a little bit about the body and, and what we need to do to maintain the body. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, like my, my, one of my yoga teachers always says that, you know, our hips and our shoulders and our knees are just poorly made joints for all of us. And so mm-hmm. a lot of things that we need to do to maintain. Um, and I think having that athletic background really formed a lot of, you know, sort of your knowledge around, okay, well, if I eat this or I don't eat that, I feel this way or I feel that way. Um, because your diet is just so important in, you know, feeling, moving, you know, being the way you want to feel when you're moving around this planet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that from a young age that when you're playing tennis, you know, nine and 10 hours a day, like you start to appreciate, okay, well, what can I do to feel better? Right. Um, you're you know, probably I, a lot more in tune with your body than yeah. the average person, right? Who's, who's sitting at a desk all day. Yeah. 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 Um, but even still now, I mean, when I like personally, and when I have students that come in, you know, and you know, once I get to know them and I, they're in my class and every time they're in my class, their nose is running and I'll just walk up to their mat and go, stop eating cheese. And <laughs> oh, then, is that right? you know, like if you don't want to be snotty, then stop eating <laughs> this dairy. And they're yeah. like, you know, or they'll be coughing and I can hear it and, and I'm and I go, what? You got to stop. And they're like, I ate, I ate a bowl of cereal before I came here. I go, see, mm. like, you know, like this is, this is the point. Yeah. And, yep. and my, and my yoga teacher is, is so much, you know, she, she'll tell stories. She lives in San Francisco and she'll tell stories about how she had a juice company right before it was popular to have a juice company. Mm-hmm. She had a juice company would give juice to her students too. You know, and she said that there was a time in her life she was Kimberly. I taught six yoga classes a day, and I lived on avocados and prana, <laughs> which, is like, which is like energy, right? And yeah, green. yeah, yeah. You know, that's great. But, that's great. Anyway, yeah. yeah. But how? Which is an extreme. Yeah, which is an extreme. <laughs> that's you know, it's that's kind of one like, diet, you know, sure. <laughs> definitely, uh, you know, a joke for everyone else. In her real life. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's just, and one thing that we want to do, I think in both areas is just make people more aware of like what you put in is what you get out yeah. and garbage you know, in garbage out. Right. And not to say that all dairy is bad or, you know, whatever, like everyone's body is different and, sure, sure. and you know, not one 
thing works for the next part or, you know, the same two people. But um, yeah, just like be more aware of what you put in your body and then how you feel afterwards. I mean, I grew up when I was playing tennis, I was like, it was carbs. Like you had to like just carb load for all the energy. Right. And, you know, at, at one point I would like eat a meal and fall asleep right afterwards. And my thyroid was like completely shot. I went to the doctor, got my blood work done. Cause I've been eating pasta and breadsticks for like 10 years straight. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So now that's also kind of when I got into the more fat for fuel kind of movement and realizing that there's a, you know, a different way to do this. And I don't have to have all these aches and pains and all this inflammation from whole wheat pasta and you know, whatever else I was eating. But yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's right. I mean, I, I went to college back in the same year. I was on the rowing team and some certain races, you know, one of the big features was the pasta dinner for the night. Oh before. yeah, of course. Yeah. Load up on those carbs and <laughs> your, your body can only store actually so many carbs, right? The rest of it just, so it's just, you know, complete nonsense, but, um, know, but you know, we didn't know any better. And, right. Uh, right. Now we have information too. And yeah. hopefully more people will, you know, open their eyes to some of this new information or yeah. not so new, but maybe new to them. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Tim Noakes, I talk about in my book is he was the, um, he was pretty much the inventor of carbo loading. He was a researcher in, in South Africa and, um, was funded by, the Gatorade Corporation. Well, <laughs> so, so, and he talks about this now. So he's like, of course, we did studies to find out how important to, that proved how important carbs are to athletic performance. Right. And um, his first his first book, The Lore of Running, L O R E of Running, has a whole section about carbo loading, and that's how it became like really popular. Um, he has since gone on TV and actually taken the copy of his book and ripped out that section and said, if you have this book rip out this section because, wow, wow yeah yeah it's it's pretty bold you got to respect him for uh for at least yeah, of course coming up and uh changing his mind changing his tune no, no. um i just wanted to add one thing that steven has really taught me over the last i would say i i just started listening i mean i i tried to push it away i mean i it takes a while to get me to completely listen right so um She's a busy don't say anything, Steve. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he he sees a holistic doctor. Now I see the holistic doctor. We're about to bring our dogs to see the holistic doctor. And he does like the muscle testing. And now Steven is getting certified in it because he has a passion for it. And um, obviously he has a lot of knowledge around food science. But what I've really found interesting in going to him is that it's really dependent on each individual being and their body and like what their body can really tolerate or not tolerate. So what works for, you know, Steven or you or me, like we're all going to be a little bit different. And so, I mean, I love cheese, you know, I love cheese and I love eggs. And mm -hmm. I went in there and he's like, Oh no, no more eggs for a uh, while. Like <laughs> not like eggs are bad, but right. just, your body is not digesting this correctly. Like, right. do you have a pain here or there? I'm like, uh huh. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, no more eggs. Uh, you know? wow. so I really find that very fascinating because, you know, I eggs. It's he. It's the difference between. It's not that eggs are bad. It's just mm -hmm. that Kimberly, right now, not forever, but right now, we have to take this out of your diet for a while because we have to start, as Stephen likes to call it, like you're taking away the layers of an onion. So mm. that your body can, you know, move and feel and be the best it can possibly be. And so, hey, sometimes it's not easy. Like I really miss eggs right now. But yeah. I just think that, you know, there's a lot of different elements to overall like health and wellness. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just diet. It's not just exercise. It's also this component of everybody's DNA is a little bit different. And yeah. like if you ignore that part, you're going to miss a big piece of all of this. Yeah. Like, huge part of the puzzle. So, um, and you know, I was so anti, I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is like voodoo medicine. Like, I don't know. What right. You're doing. Right. And now I'm like, Oh my gosh, Dr. Chu has just changed my life. You know, let's take <laughs> the dogs. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. yeah it's a uh, finally got her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so. great. We, we've had a couple of questions come in. Um, I'll jump over to those in a second. But um, what interests me as well as the health and wellness story is uh, you guys 
have both talked about sort of, um, I guess, moving from one field to another, right? Whether it's from tennis to cooking or whether it's from investment banking to yoga. I mean, there's sort of these big, these big jumps. Um, but what I'm kind of hearing is um, from what little I know about investment banking, it's hard work and there's a lot of long hours, right? Um, and obviously being a, being a tennis player at the elite level, we're talking about hard work and a lot of long hours. Um, so would you say that, um, the, the doctor I had on last week, we talked about rowing and we talked about how the discipline of, of waking up at five every morning to, to work out sort of translates into his work today as a doctor. Um, right. would you say that that discipline, that mindset that you developed over the years, um, has, uh, played into your success in this, um, you know, entrepreneurship side of things. Oh, um, you know, I, I, I actually had, um, my car dread about, I don't know, a month ago. And one of the things that came up was that you were born to work. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> um, I am a tenacious person and I've been that way since I was a little girl, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think entrepreneurship is one of those things that's a combination of tenacity and creativity. Hmm. Oh, I like that. Um, entrepreneurs are creatives. They have to create. It's mm -hmm. like uh, something that they need to, you know, it's like, okay, I have to like work this out of my system, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. um, but it has to be coupled with just such tenacity because you're faced with so many different things, you know, and challenges. Um, and you have to be able to react and make choices. Um, so I don't know if necessarily I could say like coming from corporate, it's really just more of a personality thing. I mean, I think okay. you're either born and you want to, and you're a creative, mm -hmm. you know, and it depends on how you channel that, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, yes, just a, as a short answer. Um, <laughs> it, it, definitely, yes. it definitely has helped, but cooking is also in some ways harder for me. Um, I mean, or maybe the maybe the transition was a little more difficult, but mm -hmm. you can be working at some of these places for, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17 hours a day where you sit down for 10 minutes to eat and you're, you know, over a, a fire or hot pans and you're burning yourself and mm -hmm. you're cutting yourself or, you, you know, then you get the seasoned things and you get salt and, and, and lemon, lemon juice in those cuts. Like there's, it's a, uh, it's, it's definitely, I think it definitely prepared me but like she said, like no matter what happens, like we love it and we love our customers. We love her, you know, the students and like we wouldn't, I wouldn't choose any other occupation, no matter how many hours, you know, you have to work because, it, you know, We're having, helping people, having a sense of like doing something good at the end of the day. And even at like our slowest days, if I have like really one good conversation with a customer who is, feels inspired to maybe take control of their health or, you know, it, whatever it may be, that makes it, you know, worth every single, you know, challenge kind of uh, long hour hair that I've lost during this whole process. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, ten to ten is definitely set good, um, you know, a good base layer of, you know, kind of put your head down, work hard or something that you love, mm -hmm. and try to be, be better every day, and yeah. you know, make sure you're you have the right intentions set, and you know, just have a good heart doing it. I love that. I love that. That's great. Yeah. 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 It's true. And, and both of you have spoken about the passion and the love that you feel for the work itself and, and for helping people, the community and all that. Um, yeah. So important. And not to like bring, I mean, I, I don't like talking about COVID. It's like everything is COVID COVID, but I mean, through being a teacher, yoga teacher, I mean, and especially like in the last, I mean, it's always been there somewhat, but in the last, I don't know, I would say like three to six months, like people are really struggling, you know, they're really, they're, they're struggling. And um, I always say to my students, I'm like, my wish for you is that you get out of pain, like you're mm -hmm. out of pain physically and you're out of pain mentally. Like that is my wish for you is that you get out of pain. And um yeah, I mean, I think that just being able to offer something that's relieving some of that like pain right now, um, for me through the yoga and with Steven through 
you know, the food and, and for both of us, just that community that people literally like we, we brighten people's days sometimes. And that's just so like, that's just the most rewarding thing. I mean, that's why we do what we do. Like, honestly. Yeah. So. Well said. Well said. Yeah. No, that I really resonate with that. I mean, I have been, of course, so I, I'm an administrator at a school. So I went from being on my feet all day and running around and going to meetings and things to being right here in front of a computer, staring at a screen all day. My yeah. hips have basically turned to concrete. You mentioned the hips before, you know, from just sitting all day. Yeah. And um, so that physical pain, you know, but, but also there is, there's, I think, um, this sort of level of anxiety that runs through everything these days, right? Whether it's from what's going on in the world and the news, COVID, um, you know, just all, lots of lots of uncertainty, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. No. But I hope that it can all kind of bring us together in a way that, you know, maybe the structures that we have in our societies were proven that to not really work to some extent, and hopefully yeah. open our minds that you know if we come together and like really work together then and don't have to be separated by so many different things that you know we can live the way we want to live yeah you know? and uh you know you can always work things out and talk things out you don't need to you know have a definite stance on something and not like someone because they right. think, think one way or you know whatever but right right no well said well said i mean so i'm this this journey and in in being in the low carb world has put me into this you know, you go into the, the Twitter and start to follow some of the people who, you know, do research and stuff like that. But then you go into and it becomes, you know, there's diet wars out there. You know? I know. <laughs> like, oh, I hate you because you ate vegetables. And you know? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with people, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's uh, it's yeah. just it's it's silliness. You know, I think it couldn't agree more that we have to start to figure out ways to make things work. Yeah. Um, well, I think there's a song, a pretty famous song, "Come Together." It's been a, it's been around for a while. Maybe we should all just listen to it, right? That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Blow it up here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but they don't like the, you know, the broadcast system on the television. Yeah, just, just play that for <laughs> like, like that you know, for... a week straight for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like they used to at the end of the night, they'd play the uh, the national anthem, you know, and they're signing off. Just play that. Just yeah. play that. <laughs> um. Let me jump over to, we got a cu bu bunch of people saying hello in the chat. Hello to uh, Powie, to Bill, John, John Robinson, no relation, Bill Yankst, um, and Will Yankst. Uh, John Robinson asks about, um, sounds like your space was right size. Going back to, uh, you know, your, your, your small space there um, to survive the pandemic and most locally owned restaurants are struggling. Uh, what should we ask our representatives to support local restaurants? Um, and I'm not sure if that means politically or, or just, you know, things that we can do every day to support local restaurants, but I'll let you guys take that anyway, any direction you like. Um, well, John, nice to meet you. Um, good question. Yes, we were very lucky in that we did not have, you know, a dining room. Um, and we were sort of, we also have a walk-up window, so I don't know, call it, you know, divine intervention. I don't know that I thought to do that. Um, but I, I do want to say that, uh, Alexandria city has actually been pretty amazing. Um, and so, and I, and, you know, for all the restaurants and small businesses that are in our city, they did two grant programs. Uh, we took advantage of both of them. Um, and those really helped us. One was just for, um, you know, working capital needs. And the other was more towards winterization because we had to spend money and mm. as did all the restaurants to create like an outdoor situation. Right. Um, so I think that like at this point, if they did, they probably need to do one or two more rounds of grants. Um, I think that would be really helpful from a city um, level, but also the Rebuild Virginia grant. I know that um, that's something that we applied for that we really could have used that would have actually really helped us. And I know that it would have helped a lot of other businesses, um, restaurants, obviously. Um, and I mean, they just simply ran out of money. So, you know, getting more funding there. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I would say like as far as our city is concerned, I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, definitely. Especially during like, you know, the end of the year where everyone wanted to get outside seating because that was their only option. And we, yeah. we were in the best possible situation because like we turned our, you know, two counters into just extra storage. Mm -hmm. And we have the we have the walk up window that we serve everything out of now. And you can still, you know, have some sort of um, you know, conversation with customers and you know, we don't have a front of house staff to keep employed or anything like that. So we really had it good. Like we 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 had it kind of uh, on, on the on the better side of things but um, it's i mean don't let us minimize things it's still been like very very challenging no definitely um. but still like you know <laughs> we, we don't have like to say empty 20 tables no sitting no there. Yeah. Um, but i mean the one thing that i think that could be helpful that you know to answer the question would be just like really like driving home how very important it is to support your local, not just restaurants, but just all businesses, yeah. um, you know, just getting the message out there like, hey, before you decide to, for instance, Uber, uh, order through Uber Eats, which a lot mm. of people don't know, they take like 40%, which- Wow, is it that much? Between, it's, or 33%, it's like 33%, sorry, 33%. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, margins, you know, especially when we are doing organic food, like it's, yeah. you know, and so after that point, you know, so just like letting people know, hey, instead, take a walk and walk down and like pick your food up. It's great exercise, you know, yeah. so things like that, just educating, like helping to educate consumers about yeah. the importance of supporting local businesses. So which I think Old Town and Alexandria has, have, you know, yeah. there's already uh, I mean, we're on the, the north side, but. I'll go pick up some things from the farmer's market, even on like, you know, below 20 degrees mornings. And there's still plenty of people at the market in, in old town. So okay. I go think, old town. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think the city's done a great job with the funding. They've, um, yeah, they, they've done a fantastic job and, uh, we definitely wouldn't have, we wouldn't have survived, survived without, without it, without it. Mm -hmm. um, because they, they did a winterization one where, you know, they help you get tents and help you get other things set up. And, you know, yeah. we got two, um, I don't, I don't know if you've seen, but we have a little patio set up right on Route 1 that the city yeah. got funded. And then we have another two parking spaces on Madison Street that are blocked off that have uh, picnic tables. So Yeah, so we oh, hope people perfect. can sit in the spring. Right, so in, you know when the sun comes out, people do sit at those. But that for the spring, that's going to be, be pretty nice. But yeah, great question, John. That's great. That's great. Thanks. Um, yeah, thanks, John. Let me jump over because speaking of uh, produce, and I know this is a passion of yours. Um, um, how do you source uh, your produce for the restaurant, local farmers, distributors, um, getting into some of the nitty gritty here? Yeah. So uh, before COVID, we definitely use more farmers and, and I hate and I hate to say it, but um, so we use a company called Baldor and they're out of New York and they have a lot of like the mostly the, the buying power for organics. Um, and you know, there's not a lot of, since we do, a lot of our produce is going towards juice. So a mm -hmm. lot of carrots, cucumbers, celery, spinach, kale, a lot of those things, local farmers can't grow in the same kind of quantity, the price that we can make work. Yeah. But like for our, for our dinner specials and those kinds of things, we use local mushrooms, greens, all those kinds of things, sprouts. sprouts. So we kind of, uh, you know, mix and match when we can. And definitely before COVID and after, you know, uh, this, this is all over. We, we definitely like local farmers is where we want to be. We definitely want to, you know, ideally from a, from a food perspective would, would want to be getting just produce from, from within like a 20 to 30 mile radius. Um, yeah. that's, you know, and my, my goal, but that would involve, uh, you know, stepping up our home garden a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. But that is what drives your weekly dinner specials, right? I mean, sort of what's in season, what's local. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, I don't, people kind of get on me for not like planning ahead of time, but for me, it's like what I have right in front of me yeah. is, is what I want to cook and what's going to be fresh. And, you know, so that's, uh, you know, keeps things, keeps things fun. Yeah. And by the way, folks, if you haven't uh, checked out their website, gratefulkitchenco.com. Um, and um, that, uh, that, like I said, that newsletter, uh, mouth my most mouth watering uh email that i get every week so uh, uh very very cool stuff um so yeah 
Um, and and if you haven't been there, it's uh, North Henry and is it Madison? Madison, yeah. North Henry and Madison, right there. Do stop by, check them out. Um, we'll do one more question if you guys have time. Sure. Um, yeah, sure. This one is um, uh, my my sister in law, Powie. Uh, blew out her back doing CrossFit, and her physical therapist uh, suggested mixing in CrossFit with yoga, so she's trying to do that. Uh, but her question is about her two teenagers who are athletes. Um, she wants to have them try juicing and green smoothies, but also need them to bulk up as they're growing boys. Um, what are your thoughts about finding that balance for them? And by the way, before you guys answer, nothing in on this is medical advice. Yes. Speak to your physician. Your doctor, your shaman, whoever you like, before uh, before doing any lifestyle or diet changes. But any thoughts off the top of your head about um, this idea of of um, putting on? I do know a little bit of the background for this. I think the boys uh, play soccer very at a pretty high competitive level. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's one of the and, um, toughest sports. To, to that's play. where that's where the bulking uh, question is is coming from. There. I wanted to talk um, about. Fine. So you can talk about the bulking and I'll talk about yeah. the spine. Um, All right. We'll, we'll do them both. Yeah. Well, first off, what, I wish I would have started doing yoga bef before I quit playing competitive tennis. I started doing yoga right at the end, but it completely changed. Like I'm a better tennis player now. I can move better now than I was when I was 17 or 18 Good. because of yoga. Um, so wow. and I'll let her kind of expand on that. But in terms of food, um, and I think you can att attest to this that you don't you don't need to be eating tons of carbs and that green juice and the green smoothies are going to be giving them more energy and more endurance. But as long as they just keep up their their protein intake, their good quality fat protein, uh, um, fat intake, like, you know, organic pastured eggs, a lot of those uh, pastured meats, grass fed butter, um, you know, all, all those good things. But to have the juice and the smoothies to complement with the low sugar and a lot of, you know, if you like make bone broth or soups, those kinds of things, mm. those are going to keep their, their ligaments, their joints moving uh, smoothly and, you know, bulking absolutely does all that collagen protein um, in there too. So, yeah, finding balance definitely. Maybe uh, you can talk to them a little bit about, you know, switching the diet over a little bit less, you know, less carbs and, yeah. You're eating. You're eating more specific things. You think about nutrient it more. Density, yeah. yeah. One thing right. we go for is nutrient density. Um, so you know, not just eating something just for the, the sake of eating something. Right. Got to right. have a purpose. But yeah, I mean, if she ever, if she ever wants any recipes or questions or anything, you can definitely email me and or even call me. We can set up a conversation and you know, kind of I, we for a few clients we do um, like consultations and kind of plans for how to make that transition in their life and uh, I'll be happy to do so. That's great, Stephen. Thanks. Thanks for that yeah. offer. That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, you know, you hear bulking up and you, the, my mind goes to the old uh, GNC, uh, you know, the <laughs> creatine. And those things. <laughs> yeah, creatine and stuff. But, um, you know, I much, much wiser to do it with natural whole foods. Uh, yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. Am I allowed to ask a question back? <laughs> sure. Uh, Powie, if you're still on, we're at, we got a question for you. So I blew my back doing CrossFit. Can we be more like low back? What did we do? We, do we, was, do we have a herniation? I just asked because mm -hmm. yoga is good, but it depends. Like they, you have to have somebody who understands what's happening with the spine. Right. 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 Um, so anyway, like yeah. on. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I would say any sort of uh, like holding, stretching for a while can definitely complement anything, you mm -hmm. know, your CrossFit or you're a rower or, or yeah. what. I mean, for, for me, I had a lot of uh, lower back pain, had ankle surgery, uh, some, some bad hips. And the series that she teaches that helped it the most was the Bikram yoga series. So it's the mm -hmm. same 26 postures and two breathing uh, exercises, but that was the most healing by far. Mm. And yeah. it um, it really teaches you to, you know, listen to your body, feel your body, just like you do with food, what you eat, what you feel afterwards. The Bikram really connects your your breath and connects your 
your mind and to your body and what's happening. So that could definitely probably help improve her, her CrossFit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She did specify that she, she hurt her lower back doing deadlifts. Yeah. So, so probably like L4, L5 or L5 S1 typically. Mm -hmm. okay. So my response back is if you're doing yoga, that's great. Um, avoid rounding postures, mm -hmm. rounding forward and also like forward bends. And actually typically depending on how the disc is bulging, typically you want to actually go backwards to help a bulging or herniated disc, even though sometimes it might feel like that's not what you should be doing. The rounding actually can aggravate. So just make sure wherever she, I don't know if she, is she in Alexandria or she has sent her to me. Uh, no, she's over in Chicago, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Next time so you come visit. Or to go to 105F. They have the best teachers. Oh, okay. Good. 105F. That's, those are my girls, Gianna. She's awesome. 105F, Bowie. Check yep. them out. All right. All right. Last question before, because the hour is almost up. We keep having this and I call it a happy hour, but um, so John Saunders um, keeps bugging me about drinks. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, um, green juice are those low carbs? Is it non-alcoholic or alcoholic? I'm I'm yeah. thinking he's talking about alcohol. About yeah. alcohol. Oh. Um, I mean, so one thing that we really enjoy is uh, natural wine. Mm -hmm. So we got our wine and beer wine license. Yeah. At the end of last year, and kind of learning about that whole process is been pretty interesting in the fact that it's lower alcohol content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, has if it's natural, it's not made with any pesticides, any chemicals, and he's and there's nothing sprayed on it. It's fermented naturally. Um, there's not too many residual sugars. Mm. Then that is going to be something actually beneficial for you because of all the good gut bacteria that's going to provide and the good diversity. Kind oh, of, wow. I mean, there's plenty of studies that show you know men and women who drink maybe one to I think women or men are three glasses of like naturally fermented alcoholic beverages a night. A live, night? Live longer. I know it, it's it's a little crazy, but that's a uh, sounds good to me. Yeah, hey, right. Sign no, me up. Like, uh, I know Ben Greenfield has a whole lot of those um, studies on on his page, and oh, yeah. yeah, and so yeah, for us it's the natural wine. But I mean, I'm for low carb specifically. I don't think I don't think that exists. Well, well no. <laughs> Like, you know, uh, well, every wine is going to have some degree of sugar in it, some degree of residual. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, um, we did try one, I think, um, we did try one that they sell at Whole Foods. I mean, it depends on like how much you care about what the wine actually tastes like. Um, I did not find it to be delicious. But if if that was like my only option, and I we can probably like send you the name i don't remember i want to say it's, uh fit v wine fit v wine yeah but they have a few keto focused wines but, yeah i mean huh. you know, any clear liquor that's is, what I was is saying, gonna yeah. be low carb yeah you mix that's that with like, lemon juice or like you know sparkling water that doesn't have a bunch of sugar in it um you know that's uh that might yeah probably. A, a very very old uh drink actually originated in dc it was the gin ricky which is just gin uh club soda and half a lime a shell of a lime juice that originated in dc really yeah yeah i did um, not I forget that. i forget the bar but i read i read that somewhere yeah, yeah. cool so uh I something that's it cool. i like to order that I, feel, I sound like an old lady ordering it but you know <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, you guys, I, I, I did notice that only just the other day that you guys uh, are into the wine now and you've actually got a wine club, right? Yeah. So you, you can get uh, like a membership and get, you know, depending what we're getting in three or four bottles a month. And uh, we actually carry a lot of um, uh, like naturally fermented ciders as well, but they're, they're fermented until they're dry. So there's no residual sugars. Ooh. So they're really sour, helps kind of uh, helps with your digestion, stimulate digestion and um, that kind of stuff. And yeah, so it's, it's fun. It's a lot of learning. It's been quite humbling, but, uh, we're having a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, we are. Very cool. Very cool. Well, John, just for you sometime I will do, but, but by next week I'll come up with a cocktail recipe that, uh, that I can share yeah. for you. Jim Ricky sounds good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you guys for being on. This has been so much fun. Um, really appreciate you being here. Hang on one second. I'll say goodbye to you off the air. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot.
folks, um, remember, uh, like I say, thank you, first of all, for being here. Remember to tune in next week. Next week, we have a very special episode. Um, uh, my my dear friend, Stephen Schrantz, Dr. Stephen Schrantz, the immunologist, is coming back. We're going to talk about COVID stuff, answer your COVID questions, um, vaccines, and all that. But we're also going to do something um, a little bit different. We're going to take John's thing off of there. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we're going to do a tribute of sorts to an, a professor of mine, uh, Gerald Callahan, who taught me everything I know about science writing. Uh, he passed away just over the summer. And um, his book, which I have right here, it's called Faith, Madness, and Spontaneous Human Combustion. Um, really, really uh, deep, uh, heartfelt, fascinating book. It combines his specialty. Uh, he's actually a professor of immunology and a professor of English, or he was um, at Colorado State where I went to grad school. Um, and um, so this book sort of combines uh, his background in immunology, but also um, the personal, uh, uh, his personal experiences and um, uh, something of a philosophical bent on how the immune system works and how it really makes us who we are. Um, you heard uh, Stephen and Kimberly talking about uh, the gut microbiome and, you know, all that stuff. So um, if you get a chance, check out the book sometime between now and next week. You can find some of the essays for free online, but don't be a cheapskate. Um, get it on Kindle for $5.99 and uh, you can join in the conversation. We're going to talk about all this stuff and, and more. So we'll see you next Friday. Thanks again for being here. Night night, everybody.